Have you ever said these words before? Where did it go? It was right there. It just disappeared. Well, if you're like me, you hate losing things, especially the big three. My wallet, my phone, and my keys. I got to have these three, and every time I head out the door, I do the pocket check, make sure I got the wallet, the phone, the keys, and I'm good to go. If I only have those three things, I know I can have a successful day. Well, years ago, we lost something much more important than that. We were in a church in Fort McMurray, and our daughter, Ashley, was maybe a couple years old, and church had been long since finished. The last people to hang out in the lobby had left, and we were searching high and low on, on the upper floor, the main level, the basement. We could not find our daughter anywhere, and she was a little socialite, and, you know, as dad, I was starting to get a little bit panicked and worried. Finally, I wandered into the senior pastor's office, and there she was sitting on his couch having a nice old conversation with the pastor. <laughs> well, it was a, a, a real huge relief. You know, if there's one thing that's common to all of us, it's that we lose stuff. I mean, we spend, according to research, about six months of our lives, on average, looking for things, searching for things that we've lost. Well, you've heard of the social media site Pinterest. No doubt you probably have uh, a tab, a bookmark for Pinterest somewhere. Maybe you've got it open and you're just ready to flip to it at any second. Please don't hang on. Pinterest has 335 million users worldwide. Here in Canada, Pinterest has about 8 million users. And one of the reasons that site is so popular, people love to pin things, people love to look at what people have pinned, is so popular because it's well organized. I mean, if you want to find something, you just do a search for it, and you can find the things that people have pinned. And when you pin something there, you can be sure you're going to find it there because it stays there permanently. It's one thing to lose your keys, maybe lose your spot in line, Maybe you lose that Facebook meme that you wanted to show your dentist that you thought was so funny. But it's another thing to lose your way in life. Does it sound familiar? You know, when you used to believe in one thing, but something changed and you no longer believe that anymore? You're not sure what you believe? Or maybe something came along, a change happened, and things aren't what they used to be, and you're struggling to find your way back. Maybe you had friends, and you don't have those friends anymore because you see things differently now than you used to, and you don't see eye to eye anymore. In the course of changing paradigms, changing convictions, and changing circumstances, wouldn't it be nice to have just one for sure rock solid foundation never changes no matter what the circumstances go to? Wouldn't it be nice to have a landing place when everything else around is just unsteady and unsure? Well, you have landed in the right place today because that is what we're going to talk about in today's message called Pinned. And we're going to learn how God doesn't change and he's always there for us no matter what. So why don't you stay with us and I know God's gonna bless you. And hey, if you're watching on Facebook Live today, why don't you join us in the chat? We wanna connect with you and bless you. And hey, if you have a prayer request, message us or send an email to this address right here. We wanna make sure that we are caring for you because we know that God cares for you. He loves you, we love you too. So it's gonna be a great service today. So glad you're with us. Let's get it started right now. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Richfield Online. My name is Lisa Ponak, and I'm so glad that you're here with us today. If you haven't already done it, make sure you take a quick second to subscribe to our YouTube channel 
and follow us on Facebook and Instagram so you can keep getting great content from Richfield. It might be your second best decision of the day. What could be better than that? Taking the time to share today's message with someone who could really use it or just share it on your social media. You never know how God will use it to touch someone's life. We are so excited to announce that our church will be reopening on Sunday, July the 12th. We are launching our brand new series called Destinations. We have room to accommodate guests safely, so make your plan to join us then. Don't worry if you can't join us here in the building, because we still plan to be live online every Sunday. You can find out more details at our website, ridgefieldchurch.ca. Now let's take some time to praise our God together because he is so worthy.
Imagine leaving the country for a period of time only to come back and find that the entire political landscape of the country had changed while you were away. Well, that's exactly what happened to Soviet cosmonaut Sergei Krikalov. He is known as the last Soviet citizen. And in 1991, Krikalov was headed to Baikur Cosmodrome, which is the Soviet version of Cape Canaveral in Florida. And he was, uh, the plan was for him to head up into orbit to the Russian or Soviet space station Mir and spend five months there. Well, while he was there, the USSR fell apart, communism fell, and nobody was able to send a replacement for Sergei. Well, the cosmonaut eventually returned to Earth on March 25, 1992, which was 10 months after he had departed. And when he came back, things were entirely different. The Soviet Union no longer existed, but it had split apart into 15 different nations. Presidents had changed, and even his hometown, which was Leningrad, had changed its name to St. Petersburg. What happens when life throws a curveball at you? When something unexpected happens? How do you cope with it? How do you navigate life's biggest upsets? Well, many people find themselves floundering in those defining moments. And they turn sometimes to alcohol, yes, sometimes they turn to drugs, but sometimes they turn to equally, equally destructive behavior that isn't so obvious. I mean, some people just tend to get their defenses up and they blame or they get bitter or they get angry. Other people try and uh, stuff things in uh, to try and distract or try and fill voids and maybe they'll go shopping and they'll buy things uh, to try and make themselves feel better. There's a scene from a movie called Pumping Iron, and it's an older movie that features Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the days when he was bodybuilding and winning competitions like Mr. Olympia and Mr. Universe. Well, this scene features him at a breakfast table the day before the competition, and he's sitting there with Lou Ferrigno, who you might recall from the Incredible Hulk fame, uh, and Lou's parents are there with them. And they're having this conversation, and Arnold is, is kind of chatting with the family and saying, you know, how come I'm here? You never invited me before. I think you're trying to psych me out or something like that. Well, Lou begins to say, and he turns the tables. He says to Lou, you know what? If Lou just had maybe one more month, he would be ready for this competition, and he could probably win it. But you know what, Lou, you've won a couple of Mr. Universe titles. Maybe you'll retire this year and that's pretty good. But you know, tomorrow is tomorrow and we'll see what happens. But imagine if I can win one more Mr. Olympia title. Think of how great that would be. Well, we'll see how things go. He was messing with Lou and 40 years later in an interview, Arnold would talk about how he would use psychology to, to help him win competitions and get into his competitors' heads. He says, it was natural that with all the experience I had gotten with being a trainer and working with people and all this, that I learned about people's psychology and about their weaknesses and their strengths. What is messing with your mind right now? What have you let get inside your head? What situation is going on in your world right now and you're not sure how to handle it? Look what it says in John chapter 10, verse 10. This is Jesus talking and he says, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. In 1 Peter 5, verse 8, we read this. Stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Do you know who the devil is looking for? Someone who is confused and isn't sure. Somebody who is, who is lost and is looking for the way because he wants to find somebody to pounce on and he's looking for somebody who is vulnerable. But where the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy, Jesus wants to give you abundant life. How does Jesus give us abundant life? Well, there's a word we use 
in the church at Christmas time. And it's not just a word, it's a name. And the name is Emmanuel. And it's what we call Jesus. Uh, and at Christmas time, we use that name because the name means God with us. And at Christmas time, we celebrate Christ coming to earth, God with us in the flesh. I mean, it shows Jesus coming to be with us, God being with us, and knowing what it's like to be in human skin. I mean, he walked with us, he talked with us, uh, he felt what we felt. He knew pain, he knew rejection, he knew hurt, he knew grief, he knew loneliness. He knew all of it. He knew what it was like to be hungry and thirsty. He knew what it was like to be tempted. But the title Emmanuel was not just for that time. God with us does not just mean God with us in the flesh, or else we'd have to say God was with us, past tense. But he is not called God who used to be with us. He is called God with us. That means always. He was in the, our past, he's in our present, and he's in our future. God is always with us. He is still Emmanuel. He is God who is tenaciously, passionately, uh, determinately, excitedly with us, always with us. Not only is Jesus always God with us, but he is always victorious in us. You know, there are many records that come and go over the centuries, and even in this past 12 months, records have come and records have been broken. Listen to some of these. The world's longest charcuterie board was created at 150 feet long, and it contained 400 pounds of meat and cheese. I just want to know why wasn't I invited? This 2018 Instagram post by model Kylie Jenner and her new baby had over 18 million likes. But this heartwarming photo from 2019 crushed that post. It currently sits at more than 54 million likes. I guess everybody likes eggs. The longest plank held by a male. George Hood planked for eight hours, 15 minutes and 15 seconds. In comparison, I start shaking after about one minute of planking. I prefer food illustrations. Listen to this one, ladies. Alison Felix broke Usain Bolt's record after winning her 12th gold medal at the 2019 World Championships on the mixed gender 4x400 relay team. She now holds the record for the most gold medals at the track and field World Championships. And get this, she broke the record after taking 13 months off to have a baby. Go Alison. Runner Elliot Kipchoge set a world record for completing a marathon in one hour, 59 minutes and 40 seconds. That's about 13 minutes slower than I ran my best half marathon. Records may come and records may go, but nobody takes away the title of Jesus Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Look at what Philippians chapter two has to say about Jesus. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Imagine what this passage is telling us. Every prime minister that has ever been Every president that has ever taken office will one day bow and confess Jesus is Lord. Every power that you have ever read about throughout all of history, every celebrity that you've looked up, every musician or athlete that you've emulated, every uh, humanitarian that has motivated you, every tribe and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. But Jesus isn't Lord because we declare it to be true. Jesus is Lord regardless of our confession. We don't cause him to be Lord because we choose to follow him. We follow him because he is Lord today. He is Lord right now, always has been and always will be.
And this Jesus is the one who will save us from the terrors of the coming judgment. But he is also the one who is able to save us right now from our fears, our confusions, to find us in our lostness. He is here right now for you. I want you to take that thing that you've been worrying about today, that thing that's been causing you stress or confusion, that thing that has caused you to lose your way in life. Take it and lay it alongside this truth. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. You see, Christ is all-powerful, and nothing changes that. Nothing can change that statement, that nothing can change that, that static status that Christ has. He is Lord, and he is always victorious. And in your life, he is all-powerful. He is working on situations in your life behind the scenes that you're not even aware of. But when we come to him and confess him as Lord and acknowledge his power over our lives, over our futures, over our lostness, he comes and he directs us and he makes our path bright. Christ is in your, in your life today. He's He's in your place today, working in your heart and mind, telling you that he has a hope and a future for you. And any lostness, any floundering that you might be feeling from whatever circumstance, whatever changing uh, conviction that you might have, Christ is your roadmap. He is your compass. And today you can rely on him because he is true, he's a firm foundation that you can fully lean on and fully trust in. He existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. And if you will let him, Christ will hold your world together. And not only will he do that, he will do so much more for you because he wants you to have joy and peace and purpose in abundance. When asked about staying in orbit for an extra five months, Russian cosmonaut Sergei Krikalov later admitted his concerns. He said, do I have enough strength? He asked himself. Will I be able to readjust for this longer stay to complete the program? Naturally, at one point, I had my doubts. Are you able to hang on while Christ works out his goodness, his best for you? Are you able to stay the course and lock into him and trust him completely, even when it se seems like things are all falling apart and in disarray? Well, I wanna give us today's landing point where we just kind of summarize the message in one line. And, and today's line, today's landing point is gonna be a line that many people in church will be familiar with. It's from an old hymn and it says, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Because when we allow Christ to be our foundation, when we make him our foundation, we know that he's not like a rug that's going to be pulled out from under our feet. He will stay. He is fixed. He is pinned there to be our foundation from which we can enjoy a productive and enjoyable and confident and, and secure life. See, when circumstances all around you are shifting, be it the culture, be it a pandemic, or convictions have changed, or people have changed, Christ will not change. He will always be who he always has been, King of kings and Lord of lords. And he will be victorious in your life. And he is victorious in your life today. No matter what you're encountering, there's nothing too big, nothing too bad, no person too far gone that Christ cannot heal, that Christ cannot deliver, that Christ cannot direct, that Christ cannot save. 
He is everything we need. And today, if you need Christ and you've never accepted him to be your, your guide, your savior, I wanna pray with you right now. And I invite you to pray this prayer with me. And you can say these words after me out loud or in your heart, God knows your heart. But if you want Christ to give you that direction and you want him to, and you wanna trust him to be your Lord, just say these words after me. Dear Jesus, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I ask you to forgive my sins. I ask you to guide my steps. And I ask you to clear the confusion around me and give me clarity and give me purpose. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died and you rose again. And I ask you to be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. And if you said that prayer, you are now a follower of Christ and Christ lives in you. And that's an amazing thing. And you should run around your living room right now and yell Yahoo because it's, it's the most exciting thing you have ever done or ever will do in your life. But I want to tell you more about what that means. So why don't you message us or email me at this address right here because we want to give you next steps in being a follower of Christ and, and give you more information, more understanding about how exciting this journey is. All right, so please feel free to reach out to us because we care for you and we wanna keep uh, walking with you on this journey of faith. Now, let me pray for everybody, Christian or, or not uh, alike. Let me say a prayer for you before we go today. God, I thank you for everybody who's watching. And I pray for anybody who's feeling uh, confusion, maybe bitterness, maybe anger, uh, whatever they're dealing with. God, you know their hearts, you know their situations, their circumstances. Uh, God, I pray that you would come into their, their homes today, into their lives today, and bring peace and bring assurance, uh, a certainty that you are with them and you are for them and you're fighting on their behalf and you're victorious in their lives and their situations. Jesus, I pray for a mighty sense of peace right now upon everybody who's watching. Thank you, God, that we can always trust in you, always rely on you because you never change. You are always for us. You always love us. Thank you for these things. We ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I want to invite you to stick around with us for a little bit longer to just spend time worshiping our God. And you can sing along with the words on the screen or you can just close your eyes and meditate on God's goodness. Think about him and let him speak to you because I know he wants to speak to you.
So good. 